Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the 10 most evil politicians in history. Ladies and gentlemen, we're leaving Downing Street for the last time after 11 and a half wonderful years. For this list, we're looking at the most evil British politicians in UK history. Let us know in the comments who you think the worst cabinet minister is. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Anne Widdicombe Although she no longer has any real influence over anything and spends more time on TV looking silly than anything else, she did serve as an MP for the Tories for over 20 years, including holding numerous ministerial positions. She then defected from the Tories to join UKIP and has spent most of her life in recent years railing against various human rights issues in public. Widdicombe has had everyone in her sights over the years, including opposing women's reproductive rights, trying to stop the age of consent for LGBT people being made equal with straight people, and even wanting to make blasphemy illegal again. Pretty Patel. I'd like to make a statement on the United Kingdom's approach to the global migration challenge. Seen by many as the architect behind the ongoing plan to illegally deport refugees to Rwanda, Pretty Patel has been a contentious figure in contemporary politics for years. In 2019, she finally rose to take one of the great offices of state, becoming the Home Secretary. She did things like personally attend deportations and even bolster police powers so much that it's a crime to be a nuisance. Under this partnership, those who travel to the UK by illegal and dangerous routes, including by small boats across the Channel, may be relocated to Rwanda. Now, peaceful protesters can be thrown in prison for up to 10 years. That's the same sentence as somebody arrested for distributing illegal weapons. The United Nations has used Rwanda for several years to relocate refugees, Mr Speaker. Bizarrely, she's not even all that popular with the far right anymore, because she's been viewed as not going far enough to crack down on immigration. Oswald Mosley. Sir Oswald Mosley and his union movement can start a riot in England at the drop of a slogan. A key figure in the 1920s, Mosley was a founding member of the notorious British Union of Fascists. Before his turn for the BUF, he crossed the benches at least once, was part of both the Conservative Party and the Labour Party until creating the BUF and standing for them instead. He eventually married fellow fascist Diana Mitford, with the wedding taking place in Nazi Germany with Hitler as a guest of honour. As followers of the avowed fascist run into some townsfolk who believe in democracy over totalitarianism. Eventually, Mosley was arrested by MI5 for advocating the UK kowtow to Germany and make peace and was kept either in prison or under house arrest until the war was over. Oswald walks to a truck to begin his talk and the sky falls in. The bobbies had their hands full rescuing the man who tried to make the black shirts popular in England. He later tried to get re-elected to Parliament in the 50s with such policies as making interracial marriage illegal. Boris Johnson Though you'll see many people argue that the reason for Johnson's apparent incompetence is stupidity, the truth is more sinister. Through such a carefully crafted and managed public image, Johnson's managed to avoid the full force of the criticism he's due for various actions throughout his entire career. It is clearly now the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party that there should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new Prime Minister. Though he's trying to divert attention through the UK's early vaccine rollout, the failures of Johnson's government in its herd immunity strategy, something experts were against from the beginning, led to the UK having one of the worst COVID death rates in Europe. And of course I'm immensely proud of the achievements of this government. And that's before we get into Partygate, which led to him being the first PM to have been officially found to have broken the law. And my friends in politics, no one is remotely indispensable. Robert Jenkinson, 2nd Earl of Liverpool. Peaceful demonstration, but then the magistrates and the local authorities sent the cavalry in, read the riot act. In 1819, 
Working class communities across the UK were horrified to witness the Peterloo Massacre. Liverpool was the PM at the time, personally advocated for more violence against the protesters. They were protesting all sorts of things, from food shortages and severe unemployment to the fact nearly 90% of men in the country didn't have the right to vote. The landed gentry, supported by Liverpool, hired a private militia to tackle the 60,000 strong crowd. I mean, the people who were there at St Petersfield, remember there were 60,000 of them, none of whom had the vote. They were very much campaigning for their democratic rights. The violence was abhorrent, with 18 people losing their lives and hundreds injured. The incident led to the formation of the modern police force, which was created with the express intention to protect the property of the rich and clamp down on public disorder. In fact, they thought Henry Hunt was this terrible, uh, the, the orator whom they were trying to arrest was this terrible individual and all he was doing was promoting universal suffrage, which every uh, political person supports. Margaret Thatcher. The British public is split almost 50-50 on its opinion of Thatcher, with many believing her economic reforms in the 1980s were a good thing, as well as lauding her position as the first female Prime Minister and her success in the Falklands War. But Thatcherite policies led to significant unrest in Ireland, including the 1981 hunger strike that, if anything, made the troubles even more violent. Thatcher also introduced Right to Buy letting people buy their council houses at steep discounts while refusing to allow councils to build replacement social housing, a major reason the UK is still in a housing crisis. And, of course, she championed anti-LGBT laws, decimated the trade unions and caused unemployment to skyrocket. very happy that we leave the United Kingdom in a very, very much better state than when we came here 11 and a half years ago. Tony Blair as recently as 2017, a third of the British public responded in a YouGov poll that they thought former Prime Minister Tony Blair should be put on trial for war crimes, thanks to his actions in the Middle East in the 2000s. The simple fact is that the 2003 invasion of Iraq was illegal, as determined by not just the UN, but also the internal Iraq inquiry into Britain's actions. Blair's invasion, in an attempt to maintain Britain's special relationship with the US, led to over a million excess deaths. The death toll of the war remains disputed, but some estimates suggest that around 200,000 Iraqi civilians may have died. Henry John Temple, 3rd Viscount Palmerston The civil disobedience campaign mushrooms across the nation as war-busy Britain refuses to grant India independence now. British colonialism in India began with the private East India Company, but in 1858, the British Raj was established. It was Palmerston who oversaw this transition. Under British rule, India suffered dozens of famines, leading to tens of millions of unnecessary deaths. Great Britain uses firm measures to ensure that India's 320 million keep from fighting against themselves and against Britain. Palmerston was also involved in the First Opium War, in which the British, furious that China didn't want to trade with them, smuggled opium into the country to get the population addicted and reliant on British merchants for more. To get them to stop, China was forced to sign treaties that favoured the British, including one that gave the British control of Hong Kong, which it maintained until 1997. John Russell, 1st Earl Russell when the Great Famine struck in 1845, it was down to Russell and his government to deal with it effectively. Though the famine struck across Europe, Ireland was the hardest hit because it was so reliant on potatoes thanks to stringent laws restricting how much land tenancy farmers had to grow food. It was the British government's responsibility to step in when the potato crops were infected with blight, and though the Tories tried, when the Whigs took control, Russell's response worsened the crisis. Eventually, the government's actions led to people losing their land and livelihoods, being evicted from their farms, mass emigration, and a million deaths. The famine lasted for seven years. Oliver Cromwell for a few brief years following the deposition and execution of King Charles I, the UK was united under Oliver Cromwell, who declared himself Lord Protectorate and set about bringing authoritarian rule to the Four Nations. As well as Cromwell and his Puritans doing absurd things like banning Christmas, though he wasn't personally responsible for that, he did a lot of far more heinous things too, including invading Ireland once again in 1649. He tried to forcibly convert Irish Catholics to his hardline Protestant views, stole huge swathes of land, and tried to ban Catholics from public life. After Cromwell's death, his son Richard, the new Lord Protectorate, renounced the power and the monarchy was restored. 